What governments like is the official leak. They like to leak material to trusted journalists to get their story out. Top secret documents that are leaked to special journalists who write the story the way that they want it written. What WikiLeaks did was to leak material that governments didn't want to be revealed. And that's the kind of material that every journalist should be after. The official leak is something that it might win you a Walkley, but really it's the government putting information out and the journalists being used as, as part of the propaganda process. What WikiLeaks did was to break that and to leak material that governments wanted kept secret. That's why I think that WikiLeaks is a purer form of journalism than much of the journalism that we have today. One thing that WikiLeaks has done for journalism that has never happened before has been to show us the truth of a situation in real time. So instead of having to wait for 40, 50, 60 and sometimes even 70 years to learn the truth about something that went on, WikiLeaks shows us almost in real time. Now the problem is, of course, that it's just been far too successful for its own good. It's shown up not only the governments, it's also, unfortunately, shown up journalists. So the problem is, it finds itself friendless in a very hostile world. And that's the reason why I think that WikiLeaks is uh, having so many problems at the moment. Not because it's failed to do its job, but because it's doing its job far too well. What we have seen behind the scenes has been um, a military-grade attack on WikiLeaks websites. We've seen um, uh, a whole host of 120 experts gather together to get information to smear and to destroy WikiLeaks. Now that's just attacking WikiLeaks, but the big game is all about controlling the internet and controlling the free flow of information. So the countries that believe in democracy or say they believe in democracy and openness, this is a real test. If you believe in democracy and openness, then you should support organisations like WikiLeaks. The biggest problem that the government has in Australia at the moment is that the Prime Minister has said that Julian Assange acted illegally and the Attorney General said that he would take Assange's passport away, or at least would look at doing that. So having done that, they, they have immediately given a public signal to the whole world that they don't support Julian Assange. That is a problem that I think Julian Assange has to deal with right now, what he should be looking for, and what the Australian government should, and I think is duty bound to do, is to support any of its citizens who are in trouble overseas. If you're in trouble overseas, you expect not the local country to support you, but you do expect your home country to support you and not to attack you. So what I would expect would be that the Prime Minister of Australia would, would speak out to say that she is looking for due process to be carried out and to make that point time and time again, to tell the Swedish government that the Australian people and the Australian government are looking very closely at what's happening to Julian Assange, and looking very closely at the due process that will be followed in his case and that will be doing the best to protect the interests of an Australian citizen. Now the fact that that hasn't happened, or well, if it has happened, it's happened at a very low level, indicates to me that the Australian government is not giving its full support to Julian Assange. In fact, it indicates that it's looking away from Assange at the moment at a time when it should be full square behind him.